What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Positivity Report. It's a Thursday. Kayla Yule is here. Woo! Hi, guys. Uh, you guys, uh, I've had Tanner Novlin on before. Tanner is married to Kayla. Wait, who's uh, that? Who's that guy? Who's that guy? I don't know him. Uh, you guys might know Kayla from um, Freaks and Geeks is what. Do you, do you remember the story when I found out you were in Freaks and Geeks? Do you remember No, that? I don't. Wait, tell me. So we went to a hockey game. Who's we? Me, you, Tan, and okay. a... And a Girl that shall not be named. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ex girlfriend. <laughs> An ex. And we went to that. I saw the pictures in my phone. We went to that bar near the Staples Center where the floor lights up outside the bar. Oh, yeah. That hotel. Okay. Okay. And we were at the bar and we were drinking. It was like the bar was not crowded. And the bartender goes, Were you in Freaks and Geeks? And I was like, Wait, what? <laughs> I had known you for like a year plus and did not realize wait josh that's <laughs> so unimpressive because i seriously am the exact same person yeah. as i was <laughs> all those years ago i don't look the same yeah. but it, i basically played myself in, in the show in freaks yeah yeah. So. yeah and so i'm like wait a second so i started going down the rabbit hole. i was like you were the hot new girl that they were all in love with oh my god tanner did you know this he's like yeah i did and i was like well I, you guys it's like freaks and geeks First of all, the greatest one season of TV ever made. Mm, okay. Yeah. And one of my favorite shows of all time. Yeah, I agree. And not realizing that you were Maureen oh, in Freaks and Geeks. Maureen Sampson. Maureen I know. She's Sampson. She's so sweet. No, I just remember like uh, going in for the audition and um, it was a multiple step process, but just seeing all kinds of awesome, interesting kids because we were all kids yeah. there. How old and, were you when you got um, it? I think I was, let's see, how old are you when you, I was a freshman in high school. Like 14, 15. And I remember being so nervous because the show was called Freaks and Geeks. And I didn't want, and I was just starting a new high school, and I didn't uh. want anyone to think that I was a freak or a geek, so I didn't tell anyone that I was on the show. I mean, it's such a high school mentality oh, when yeah, trying totally. to fit in is so important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, now looking back, yeah. Now thing. looking back, I should have like you know told every single person because that show was so fantastic. Yeah. It was so much fun. So good and yeah. like legendary. You Thanks. know what I mean? I know. First time I ever shot rockets off in my entire life. Rockets? Oh, because well, yeah, that's right. we're shooting that's the rockets, rocket and we actually got to do it. it was that really is. Fun. Awesome. Yeah. I always Thanks. wanted to shoot off rockets and like I would go to those stores with the rockets and my dad's like, promise me, promise me you're actually going to build this and shoot it off. And I was like, I can't make that promise. No way. No, I you're the kid that like <laughs> in the store, the rockets already built and you shoot it in the correct. store and like, you know, Do I just cost press? your parents an entire ceiling. Uh -huh. <laughs> correct. That is correct. Yeah. Kayla. You did it. I know you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the Positivity Report. We're here every single weekday, Monday through Friday. If you've never uh, joined before, welcome. Thank you so much. This is the Good People Association. We find the good. You can go to the gpa.fun. You can join the Bucket Club. We do all kinds of fun stuff here, live streams, all that. Uh, we have an amazing merch store. We shot a merch commercial yesterday, Ooh. Kayla, and it was very silly. I just want to see the outtakes of Th that. That's <laughs> basically, the entire thing is just outtakes. 99%. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that should be your commercial. Just the outtakes of you guys shooting uh -huh. the commercial. Well, Ikaika says, as we're shooting, he's like, I'm going to also put up an outtakes video. Yes. Like, yeah, that's. That I will get more hits and more likes than the actual commercial. 100%. I promise. Back in the day, the Between the Sheets blooper reels did better than every episode. Because <laughs> everyone wants to see everyone make mistakes. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. And I do love, I mean, when I was a kid, you'd get, when, when you were a, subscri a subscriber to Sports Illustrated, you would get the blooper videos with like your subscription, like NBA bloopers, NFL bloopers. Uh -huh. And I swear to God, that's my brother and I's like biggest laugh from yeah. ages like eight to 13. Yeah. I'm from Southern California originally. And so we would always watch surf videos and yes. my, my brothers would always have the surf videos and the skateboard videos. And the only thing that was entertaining to me wasn't that they landed the tricks. I wanted to see them <laughs> not land the tricks. I know, I know. It's such a, <laughs> it's like America's Funniest Home Videos and why it's still on the air That was my later. favorite show forever uh -huh. and still might be. I think, I think the first is. episode of, and I, I don't know, I have a weird memory, but the first episode of America's Funniest Home Videos, there was a gymnastics montage. And I think to this day might be the hardest I've ever laughed. Where like, <laughs> I can still see like the girl hitting the palm horse, but not, <laughs> I'm I know. sorry. It's, Nowadays, we have, the internet just has it on demand. Totally. So yes. yeah, you can just TikTok your way through uh -huh. it. Yeah. Uh, Kayla Yule, uh, thanks for making the trip in. Um, yes. I know that, uh, you know. It's it's hard to be places at 9 a.m. in the morning when you have a little little daughter. Yes, it is. I mean, it's hard to be places at 9 a.m. no general. matter what. Yeah, just being an true. adult and making yeah. sure you're on time, especially mm -hmm. in a city with terrible traffic. Mm -hmm. I even called Josh and I was like, wait, what parking spot is it? <laughs> <laughs> it is a kind of a confusing parking situation down there because there's like an inside, outside. Right, I get right. It, it yeah. is a little confusing. But we know. figured it out. Don't we worry, guys. It. We got it. We, we got, got it. it. 
Uh, thank you, everybody in chat. Great to see everybody. You guys can Streamlab, uh, streamlab.com slash goodpeoplegpa. You can also super chat us, help support all of the programming here. Uh, right now, uh, a portion of all proceeds will go to the Central Coast Film Society, uh, where Ken Knapsack will be guest judging a film festival this weekend Ooh. to help young people keep creating movies wow. and short films. And Gosh, all that kind and of we stuff. need that right now, I too. I just have to say, I love Good People Association and the, the positivity report. I mean, it's all the goodness that Thank we you. need out Thank there you. right now, I especially after that. the year that we've had. I know. Right. I mean, I genuinely mean that. You guys are doing a really good thing. Well, thank you. We are we Pun are intended. trying. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so and also today on the show now, Kayla. I don't know if we, oh, is he already in? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna get to him at about nine twenty. I'm so excited. Um, John Reed is a magician, right? And we do a thing here on the show called the teacher feature, uh, Kayla. And right now he's actually teaching magic virtually to a lot of youngsters that oh, cool. are really interested in magic. But he's also a very talented magician as well. He also like he. Built, did you see that, that Optimus Prime balloon animal that he built at the Salt Lake City Comic Con? I sent you that link. Anyway, uh, it's no. it's crazy. You sent me that link? Sorry. Yeah, it's fine. Again, I'm a mom. Sorry. <laughs> Definitely missed that link. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. It's all good. <laughs> um, and uh, John Reed will be in here at about 920. And uh, I, again, we talked about videos that we love, right? Yeah. So my YouTube search history basically is like Yacht Rock music of videos. Of course. Okay. Uh, and magic. And then like golf instructional videos. So it goes in that order. And I am obsessed with magic. I personally think that it is sorcery. I don't think that, like, magicians... Like, some of the tricks, it's too... It's too... I, I don't... My mind doesn't equate. Like, I don't get... Have you ever tried to do magic yourself? No. And the reason I don't want to do it is uh -huh. because the boyish person inside of me doesn't want to be ruined by knowing oh, how to do magic. You want the magic to be in yes, the magic. Correct. You don't want to know. No. Oh, that's really cute. It's like when I went to the Magic Castle, I've been to the Magic Castle twice, I think. Maybe three times. I've never been. I've always wanted to go. Well, I have that pass and I was given it I was given it right before the pandemic. I played oh, golf wow. randomly with a magician. <laughs> yeah. I got paired with a magician at a public golf course. <laughs> Greatest day of my life. Okay. <laughs> I'm playing golf. I'm by myself. Okay, I just went out early in the morning. I get paired with this older gentleman. Second tee, he was like, uh, he's like, give me your, give me your hand. I was like, what? And he was like, uh, would you like to see a trick? And I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> let me see the trick. So for the next eighteen holes, Kayla, he probably showed me nine different tricks. And I mean, I, this is heaven for you. I Josh know. Makuga. Golf and magic <laughs> together. So <laughs> wow. I forget. I have the guy's name on a card. He gave me a magic castle pass. He's like, I've never seen, he said to me, he's like, never seen an adult this excited about uh, magic. Yeah, I believe I like, it. Mm -hmm. I believe it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a magician coming in today. Today. I can't. Virtually, wait. yeah. John Reed, uh, aka I have Mustache to say, on the Mood, aka Tricky Biz, NY.com. Yes, yeah, sorry. No, no. All good. the shout outs in the world. I was sure. just going to give him props because I think doing magic is really hard, but I can imagine teaching magic to yeah. kids would be even harder. Yeah. So I, I want to make sure he kind of addresses that too because that's got to be very difficult. Well, teaching anything to kids is really tough. <laughs> yeah, that's, what I, that's what I mean. I mean. Magic is hard. Just that, yeah, you're right. Really, really difficult. Absolutely. Uh, as I'm learning, I mean, like, obviously Rosie really can't do anything per se yet except smile and literally destroy her bedroom last night with poop. Uh, <laughs> it was a scene. So I was telling Kayla this before. So last night, we we all uh, we went out to dinner. Kayla and Tanner and like Amanda and I have been in like a friend bubble this whole pandemic, right? But we're all now fully vaxxed. Can I tell this so. story very quickly? Sure, where Josh's mom came up to me um, and said, "Don't you have any anyone for Josh?" And I was like, "I." I don't really right now. All my <laughs> friends are taken. I'm so sorry, but I'm constantly always trying to find someone for Josh. Always trying to find something, someone for Josh. And then at my husband, my Tanner, my and Tanner's engagement party, Amanda and Josh met. And mm -hmm. I feel like that's a rom com. That's not a real life thing where you meet your love, the love of your life at your friends. Engagement party. Engagement party. And yeah. it was a kickball party. It yes. wasn't like a stuffy. Fan. We were in the middle of a park playing. Team bride versus team groom. Anyway, long story short, no wonder we're all best friends we because all got it was almost yes. too good to be true. Uh, and also, I mean, the part of the rom com that's the funny part is I wanted to get a haircut before to like look because I was the best man in the wedding, <laughs> right? And I wanted to look fresh, Ikaika. And oh, I have the picture somewhere. That I, I got uh, it's too. I should have found it before this episode, but uh, I went to this barber shop. Didn't had never been to it before, and they gave me like a zero on the sides and a flat top. Mm -hmm. I looked like I was going to war. Like I was. You looked like the you Marines. were going, or you had just come home from. Yes. 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 Correct. You and I like got there, and and Tanner was like, "What happened to your hair?" 
And I was like, I it was don't know, it man. was extreme. It, it was, was extreme. an extreme cut. And Kayla, in her in her ever all overwhelming kindness, as it usually is, you always have a big smile on your face. You're the sweetest human being on the planet. Okay, she, you're, you're like, wow, a haircut. <laughs> That's that's the nicest thing I could have said. I couldn't think of anything else. That's when you know it's bad. It was real bad. And then Amanda was in this kickball game, and I was chugging those like strawberries that somebody had bought. Those like in a can strawberries. <laughs> We're so was, classy. I know it was a park. It was a park party. Drink the strawberries. And I was like, and she was my catcher as I was throwing. You know, I was pitching, and I was like, "Are you paying attention?" She's like, "Put your strawberries down." And that's how we knew that this relationship mm-hmm. would work out eventually. Yeah. <laughs> It's so funny. You spend your whole life trying to like look good for people. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, it's the time you get the worst haircut of your life mm-hmm. that you meet the love uh-huh. of your life. Yep. Okay, continue with your Rosie story. Okay, so last night. So we went out to dinner last night. It was a very nice dinner. I mean, that place, La Cava in Sherman Oaks, was some of the best Italian food I've it had. Really it was good. really good. And you, I would say, are one of the pickiest Italian eaters. Very so for you to say that, it, it's that's high praise. Bonkers. Good. Mm-hmm. Like I, I Whatever. The, it was a pappardelle with like a veal ragu. Holy moly. What? So, yeah, yeah, he got, he got, it's on Ventura and what, like Woodman? Ish, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Woodman ish. Yeah. <gasps> yeah, it's really good. Oh, I might live here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know. <laughs> we'll see you there. The Hawaiian hunk. When you mention food, the Hawaiian hunk gets excited because you know, Kayla. Every Wednesday we stream a crock pot. Yes, here, yes. The hot crock pot. Our friend Christy McGee uh, made him a Hawaiian shirt. It a Hawaiian shirt, so it wears a shirt now during the streams. Oh my god! And a tutu that's like a Steelers tutu. So those combined together, correct? Such correct. great fashion. And uh, and then um, w- every time, like on Wednesdays, like so, what are we doing for the crock pot today? And then we go to the store, and we get so next week for Cinco de Mayo, we're gonna do carnitas, Ooh, some carnitas tacos. Great choice. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. But so we go to this restaurant, and Rosie. Rosie gets kind of overwhelmed, I guess, a little bit uh, with sounds she's and people. Nine she's, weeks she's old. nine weeks old, so she just passed out like the whole meal. She woke up mid meal, chugged a bottle, went right back to sleep mm-hmm. like dream kid, right? She really is a dream child. Near the end of dinner, I was like, she's been sleeping this whole time. I looked at the man. I was like, we are totally we're screwed. She's not going to sleep through the night. She's been sleeping this whole time. She's usually like up and kind of doing like her <laughs> things between like Being seven cute. and nine thirty. Yeah. Well, she wasn't doing that tonight. <laughs> last night. So we get home and she's like, give her a bottle. And I'm like, I I don't, she doesn't, she's passed out. She's like, she's going to wake up hungry and she's going to wake up in the middle of the night. I was like, she's going to wake up in the middle of the night regardless. It just might be a little bit earlier. So we put her down. We put her in the snoo. We were talking about the snoo yesterday because Ken and Grace had never heard of the snoo. <laughs> and then in the middle of the night, she wakes up and I'm like, all right, I'll go warm a bottle. And all of a sudden I hear like a, <laughs> and then Amanda go, oh no. <laughs> so I'm thinking like something fell or I don't know what happened. I come in there and Rosie had pooped everywhere. <laughs> she had been Amanda was taking off the diaper and there was legitimate poop everywhere. <laughs> and it Am- happens. <laughs> I mean, it happens to all of us as adults. Yes, so you it, can't get mad at a <laughs> nine week old. And I'm giggling. In a man- so we clean that up. We put her in a bottle. She falls back to sleep till about six this morning. And so that's really good sleeping. I woke up and I was like, remember when she pooped everywhere last night? And she's like, you. Yes, I was there. <laughs> So, so to be honest, going out with a child and then, you know, getting the poop in the middle of the night, kind of worth the story. Uh, totally. Kind of worth the story. And I have to say, like, you, you guys are really good parents. This isn't just me saying this because I, we're, we're on really the mic. Good parent no, you're Amanda. both really around, good parents. Kayla. And okay. then also, on top of that, you have a really good baby. Yeah, so it makes for a great combination. Lucky. I mean, to yeah. take uh, go out to dinner at nine weeks mm-hmm. is awesome. Yeah. So good for you guys. It was a good time. Uh, and um, so then we were leaving the restaurant. You guys missed this part. So we're leaving oh. the restaurant. You guys went your separate way. Katie and Nick went their separate way. And I'm walking by this table outside Izakaya because Izakaya is mm-hmm. like right next door. And there's this couple eating, and we had the stroller. And I just put, I stopped the stroller at their table. I was like, "He came for sushi. You left with a baby. Oh. Congratulations!" And I walked <laughs> away like as a joke. And they thought it was really funny. So I go back and get Rosie. And this guy, like we're walking back, and the guy comes running after. He's like, "Listen, man, I believe in fate, and that things happen for a reason. I want you to take my business card, and you call me." And I was like, please work at the Golf Channel. Like, please be an executive producer. Wait, what did he do? Channel. He's a travel agent. Oh. <laughs> I know. I went, Amanda was like, what does he do? Is he like a producer? Right, a I was like, right. No, nah, he's a travel agent. So is he offering you a free trip? I don't know. I think you need to call. He Just was, keep it going. He did say. Give him a call. I know, right? He did say, first of all, his his card said doctor. So and so. I was like, he's a doctor he's travel a agent? Doctor of travel? Can you? <laughs> I'm so confused. 
I know. Now, now you really need to solve this for us. Yes, you exactly. Need to, you need to do this. Well, now, now I'm very intrigued. And also, as he was leaving, he's like, "Yeah, I, I get uh, special trips to Disneyland." And I was like, "Well, now you're talking a kid's <laughs> language." So, and that's Ikaika gets excited. Ikaika loves, loves Disneyland. Disneyland theme now, parks. Now, okay, have you gone online to try and get the tickets? Because apparently, so we haven't done it, but friends of friends have just like said they're in waiting rooms forever. I haven't yet. Oh, no. okay. Mm-mm. I think spare yourself that. Well, for a little I'll tell while. you what doesn't have a waiting room because we got reservations on Monday. Is Six Flags. Oh, really? Ikaika and I are going. He's oh, I was like, you and Rosie. Flag. You're taking no. Rosie on her first roller coaster. <laughs> no. Wow. Yeah. Well, we know the story of Amanda going to uh, Six Flags, which is a disaster. She got <laughs> sick on like the second roller coaster. Ikaika and I are going to shred this thing up. We're bringing cameras. We're going to shoot all kinds of fun stuff. Do you so. guys have a favorite roller coaster? I, I really like, like Goliath. Goliath. Ooh. Okay, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah, I like good. that Tatsu one because you're like. X2 is really good. X2 is sick. X2 is the one that I think gets me the most excited for mm. sure. Yeah. There's some good coasters. And for those people who are listening and aren't in California, if you do make your way to Los Angeles, definitely hit up Six Flags. It's yeah. worth it. Yes. It's. I mean, the time I went, I rode half the roller coasters alone. And when I would come out, Amanda would be laying on the bench being like, I don't I know. feel good. I felt bad. Also, the but park is huge, so you can walk around everywhere Correct. and, you know, eat a hot dog while you're doing it. And it doesn't count because you're walking. It's also a Monday, Kayla. During school, we had to make reservations. You know how many coasters we're going to be able to fly around? Oh, it's so true. Just I didn't even everything. think about that with the pandemic, yeah. how few people there will be. Mm-hmm. Do you have to wear – oh, sorry, I hit my mic. Yeah, do you have okay. to wear a mask on the roller coaster? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. You do? Yeah. Okay. Because well, so, I'll be screaming the whole time. Well, right. That's what I would – or I didn't know if, like, you're spaced back enough. Like, it's six feet in between each person on the coaster. I'm guessing the coasters are going to go every other. Yeah. Is that what it is? Right. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. what so you line. have the roller coaster to yourself? No, there's, no. there's going to be someone like two or like one or two rows behind you. Got it. Okay, mm-hmm. but you still wear your mask. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, you guys are going to fly through all oh, the man, coasters. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, are you going to try and make yourselves throw up? No. no I did, almost did last time. <laughs> it was okay. like 95 degrees, so I had like a heat stroke, and then I went on that stupid Wonder Woman ride, and <laughs> it was over. Good thing it's not Wednesday and Crock-Pot Day, and you're I not know. eating your carnitas, then mm-hmm. going on the coasters. Going on an that empty stomach straight pretty. from here Monday after the positive report, straight to Six Flags. Great. So excited. Your jobs are awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Ikaika bought like the GoPro 6000, and so we can like put it on us, and it's got like the angles and everything. It's pretty sick. You think it'll stay on on the coaster? Oh, you can mm-hmm. hold it, and I have a thing. It's a 360, so it will record every angle, and I could just edit it afterwards. Wow. Yeah. I'm here. waiting for mm-hmm. to see what coaster makes you drop that thing. <laughs> We also, uh, yesterday I said to Amanda, I was like, going to Six Flags, I need a fanny pack. And she's like, we have seven fanny packs. I'm here. sure you guys have a lot of fanny I was going to say, I think we have a few too. Uh-huh. Amanda a got in, like really into fanny packs about a year and a half ago and hasn't really worn them really since. But we are parents, so the more baggage you can carry and clip on your body, the better. The uh, Tanner and I are both on the show Roswell, uh, yeah, yeah. the remake, and so we just got our wrap gifts. And they gave us a Carhartt, is that? Yeah, yeah Carhartt yeah. backpack. Whoa. The thing has so many compartments it's also like mustard yellow kind of a cool color i'm into it i'm into it i I didn't know i'd like this carhartt backpack but there's so many you can hold it holds everything you can literally take a carhartt backpack and drag it behind your car for like six years and it would be fine so we will have this forever forever yeah it'll probably be a diaper bag until she's you know four and then it'll just be i'm not using this as a diaper bag (laughs) this is my bag no i'm joking Uh, there is a really funny comment in the chat. Trey T just says, there are no rules to business cards. Yeah. Oh. So he could write doctor or whatever. I could write True. Dr. Joshua Makuga DDS. And they were like, are you a dentist? I'm like, <laughs> Maybe. Up to exploration. Show me your teeth. Let's get weird. <laughs> that is really true. There's no there's mm-hmm. not, no regulations with None. Bu- business cards. None at all. Uh, Sarah Risley and Chattel said, Cedar Point is at the top of my bucket list. Have you ever heard of Cedar Point? No. It's in Sandusky, Ohio, which is about three hours from Pittsburgh. We went as a family one time. It's awesome. Like, they have the fastest. At one point, they had the two fastest roller coasters in the world. They were Both of them were at the park. Wow. Yeah, it's like so rated you, number one. Yeah. It tops six flags. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's I a guess scene. we're going to what Sandusky, is it? Ohio. Sandusky. Yeah. Like, got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just the family vacation. We're like, let's go here. Let's go. Nope. Sandusky, Ohio. Yep. Here mm-hmm. we go. Mm-hmm. You, you got to believe there's like a kid's Hilton there where there's like seven pools. Because, you know, there's, and there's a water park there for sure. So we can go to that. Right. Done. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. I miss a good water park too. Mm-hmm. See, that's the thing the pandemic. I would go to a water park by myself sometimes because nobody would go with me. <laughs> nobody would go with what me. What friends do you have? No one's going with you to water well, parks? Remember back in the day, Ikai Kishabi, what do you got? The Prince season Gary. pass also includes that Hurricane Harbor at Six Flags. So, 
There you go. There you have it. That could be a part two video in like a few weeks. Holy moly. All I ask is that you guys get matching jellies and Ooh. wear them on your feet. Oh, and chubby shorts. And Ooh. chubby shorts. And wear them. Chubby jellies. With the fanny pack. To yes. Hurricane Harbor. I got to get a waterproof fanny pack, Kayla. <laughs> Oh, man. And you go in those, like, creepy lockers where you're definitely getting athlete's foot because yeah, of water. Yeah, that's what I said. So wear the jellies. Yeah, that, the that's jellies. my one rule for you. Mm-hmm. No bare feet. Yep. No, no bare feet. <laughs> no bare feet. <laughs> uh, so one time, I did, Paul Fiore, my buddy, who you know, Caleb, did yes. go to did go to uh, Wet n' Wild out here in San Dimas with me the one time. And it is the uh, water park in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And he got a toe infection. He really did? <laughs> yes. See, but he's kind of a mush when it comes to, like, that kind of stuff. He's like, oh, I went out and I, I, I stepped on a twig and it went through my foot. I'm like, come on, Paul. <laughs> See, I think that jelly rule or that sandal rule is very, very important yes. to making your water park experience, to maximizing Maximize. your water park water yeah. park experience. Well, speaking of maximizing experience, Kayla thought she was just coming on to hang out today. But yeah. little did she know that magician John Reed would also be here. You know from so TrickyBizNY.com, he also built... I think it's like a skyscraper of of balloons into an Optimus Prime at Salt Lake City Comic Con. John Reed, welcome to the Positivity Report. Hello. Hello, good people. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Thanks for uh, joining us, man. I'm doing great. Trying to stay safe and sane so far today. I'm one out of two. One out of two. I like it. I like it. Uh, John, so fantastic mustache, by the way. Uh, Oh, thank you. I get it from my mother. (laughs) Yeah, Uh. She's super sweet. She gave you the hair right off her back. <laughs> See, magicians always have these awesome dad jokes. I love you, man. It's just you know fantastic. A, you know when a joke becomes a dad joke, right? When's that? When the punchline is a parent. Uh, I told that joke on the show last week. How did I not remember? I, I feel well, like you guys are minute. best friends in two seconds. Yes. This is like a very, you, this is a love fest. Oh, man. You know when the punchline is a parent, right? <laughs> oh, shit. No. Just after the delivery. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, he went up to you. He kids. followed it up with a better <laughs> oh, joke. <laughs> and the thing is, I don't have kids, so that makes it a faux pas. Oh, oh my gosh. You could go all day. John. Just yeah. incredible. Incredible. Uh, John, tell me a little bit about yourself, because our buddy John Mariano, a founding member here at the Good People Association, sort of an advisor to the channel and an amazing human being, uh, recommended me reach out to you. And I reached out about three months ago, and then I had a kid, and then I reached back out, finally got you on the show. So just tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I, uh, so six years of college, I'm a magician instead, so my parents are thrilled. Thrilled. Um, but I started out doing magic through college to put myself through. And then as I got out, I realized this is a great job. I get to make people smile all day, every day. I get paid for it. Mm -hmm. Why would I do anything else? Mm -hmm. And I remember telling John, I was like, I'm going to be a magician. He's like, yeah, but what are you going to do for a living? I was like, no, that's what I'm going to do. And he's like, ooh, Ooh. really? (laughs) And uh, and he's since that day, he's always said, he's like, man, I've never been more wrong and I couldn't be prouder. And uh, I travel the world. I I started out doing magic. I moved on to balloon sculpting and I sort of made that like a a niche for myself. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Poptimus Prime. He was yeah. uh, at the time he was a Guinness World Record. Good pun. Um, yeah. He's the world's lar- he was the world's largest balloon sculpture by a single person. Somebody beat me out. Oh. Guinness liked the sculpture so much they gave me an additional record and they called it the largest transformer made out of balloons. Oh wow! Uh, That's he, amazing. Was, he was a little over fifty feet tall, Ooh, and wow. uh, he was so big we couldn't stand him up in the Salt Palace because the Salt Palace ceiling is only thirty feet, so he had to be kneeling, which made for better photo ops. Yeah, for sure. Um, but since the pandemic, I pivoted. I couldn't go out and do parties anymore. Yeah. So I started teaching online. A buddy of mine put together this incredible curriculum. It's called Discover Magic. I own the New York chapter. Okay. And uh, I teach, so far I've taught a little over 10,000 students virtually since oh the pandemic God. started. So, yeah. Dude. That's a lot of it's, kids uh, that you're transforming. Yeah, it's a great yeah. way to give back. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry? Yeah. Oh, I, I tried to make an Optimus Prime <laughs> pun, pun, but it didn't really work. I said, that's a lot of kids that you're transforming. That was really good, Kayla. Just trying. I'm not as good as you guys. I'm not as good. I'm sorry. I don't think anybody's as good as John. Because when a magician, because here's the thing, John, you could say whatever you wanted. I'm I'm obsessed with magic. I talked about it earlier on the show. Obsessed with magic. Uh, I've been to the Magic Castle a couple of times. Anytime I see magic, anytime somebody says, do you want to see a trick? I don't. Yes, I do. I want to see them all. Uh, so and so magicians don't take this the wrong way magicians have a one up because you guys can legitimately make any joke you want it was like <laughs> yeah that's good Dude, all right he's making tricks and jokes i like it i like it i like it i like it yes. yeah yeah and, and most of my humor is bad dad jokes <laughs> good that that's 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 my go to 100% um, 
that, that's my style. It's it's it it works for me. Uh, I don't I don't I don't recommend it for most people because it doesn't work for most people. But for me, it does work. John, this is the perfect show because that's all I have is dad jokes. It's puns and dad jokes. So you're welcome, sir. Um, uh, what? <laughs> when did you? Were you like an early adopter of magic, and then after college, you're like, this is really what I want to do, or? So uh, I got a, I got a magic, my granny gave me a magic kit when I was five years old okay. and I used to go to the library and take out books and learn magic tricks. And I showed my mother one and she was like, Oh, how does it work? And I was like, a magician never reveals their secrets. And she went, Ooh, you better be careful. Kids might beat you up in school. And I thought, I don't want to get beat up. So I continued to study magic, but never showed anyone. I kept okay. the books. I would go to the library, take out books on magic and hide them under books about robots or trains or whatever. Kids are the worst. And I was like a closet magician. And then in uh. college, Somebody had a deck of cards and I showed him something and all of a sudden this was a great icebreaker. It was a way for me to really like meet people, engage, because yeah. I was a shy kid growing up. Sure. Um, and then it just sort of like tipped over. Somebody said, well, will you work my nephew's birthday party? And I was like, oh, I don't do it for a living. And they said, well, I'll give you $50. I went, you want me to get a rabbit? I can find a rabbit. <laughs> Uh, and then just one referral led to the next, led to the next, led to the next. And it paid my way through college, wow. through, through the, the, the years that I went through college. 90% of my income came from doing kids' birthday parties. Holy cow. And when I got out, I went, all right, there's a way to make a living at this. So I started moving to schools, libraries, um, bigger country club events. And it just one thing led to the next, led to the next. And I've been very fortunate to kind of fall fall face forward into good fortune throughout my career. Uh, and uh, I have an amazing network of friends. John Mariano is one of them. Yeah. And I have I have an army of people like that. And they just go, you'd be good for this. Mm -hmm. And they just pass my information along. Have you invented any of your own tricks? Uh, yeah, yeah, a handful. I have a handful of them. I own, I, I own a magic manufacturing company. Um, have you ever seen the magicians pull the streamers out of their mouth? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm that, I'm that guy. What? So yeah, if you've seen, uh, Penn and Teller did one on, on their recent special that pulled it out of a, a prop. Um, magicians have been doing it on TV shows for years. I yeah. bought the company about 15 years ago from a friend of mine who lives in the uh, Massachusetts, uh, Boston, Massachusetts area, just outside uh, of the city. And uh, I've been doing that for about 15 years. And along the way, a handful of my own creations have kind of spilled into the product line. So, yeah. I feel oh like that's goodness. the one trick everyone's seen. Brilliant. It Brilliant is. on and, you. Uh, Good job. The best part is once they use it, they got to get more. So oh, it's, it's so uh, job security. Yeah. It's so true. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, man. Um, okay. So uh, teaching. So what would you, what do you think like the biggest challenge, obviously, virtually kind of thing, but teaching children magic. Uh, I have a, you know, a nine week old baby. Kayla has a, a daughter that's a, a little over a year and a half. Mm -hmm. What do you think is like your biggest challenge teaching kids magic? When they get frustrated and they think they can't do it. Okay. So selecting the tricks is paramount. You can't, you can't teach a kid how to do in crazy, uh, you know, incredible, crazy palming or, or anything that's going to require intense sleight of hand. A lot of the stuff has to be not necessarily self-working because then they won't develop the skills, but it has to be manageable. And everything that I teach them sort of um, one thing is a progression on the next. So a lot of times I'll refer to the trick that we did in the beginning, and we'll talk about not just what the secret is, but what makes the trick work. So, you know, having fun, being engaging, being respectful, being prepared, uh, building up that confidence and tricks to build confidence. So, you know, I have the mm -hmm. kids stand like a superhero right before uh, they perform a trick around the corner and then they come back and now they're all confident because they've done this pose I love that. and it sort of like tricks their brain into thinking like, I can do this. And, uh, the other the other challenge is when you have a class of like say nine or ten kids, man, those imaginations. I, it's a gift, and <laughs> and it's beaten out of us as we grow up. And <laughs> and to see that in the kids' eyes, all of a sudden they go, you know what we could do? What if we did this? How about if we do that? And it's like I can't write the ideas down fast enough that these kids give me. And I say every class I learn more than they do. Wow. Um, they they just bring back that childlike wonder, that that wonder that you have. Yeah. I have the curse of knowledge. I know how all this stuff works. Yeah. So for me, the real, the real magic, if you will, no pun intended, yeah. um, <laughs> pun, no pun is when the kids come up with an original presentation for something that I've been doing for mm. 25, 35 years. And they go, wouldn't it be cool if we made this story uh, about Houdini and getting out of locks? And I'm like, I would have never put a card trick with a story about Houdini. Wow. Oh, man, that's so cool. You know what's so great about this, too, is I feel like parents are trying to figure out what to do with their children. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not just with online school and everything, but even just activities to keep them, you know, entertained. And this is perfect for that, because not only do they learn magic, they get to hang out with you, hang out with other kids, and then also learn confidence and all yeah. of these really key values that they'll have forever. 
so the the core of the program is about the eight traits of a true magician and it's being respectful prepared confident enthusiastic wow. authentic giving um it's it's all these things that i want the kids to learn but if i just said hey you need to be respectful right. It's going to go in one ear and out the other. But if I do a magic trick and I go, now, why do you think I'm teaching you this on respectful day? And they go, oh, well, you know, you want to make eye contact with the person so they don't see what you're doing. And I go, yeah, yeah, why else? And they give me the reasons why being respectful is important. And as they're telling me the answers, they're coming up with this. That's how they're really learning. Yeah. So being able to give them these skills. And, you know, I used to joke that I went to magic camp and I did. And I used to say that I got beat up by the chess camp because that's <laughs> what you think. You think a kid who goes to magic camp, it's like... Um, uh, the guy in the 40 year old virgin, you know, <laughs> Rell's character, you go, okay, that's, that's what they grow up to be. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of true. But a lot of kids that came through magic camp are now successful actors, incredible businessmen and business women. Like these people have gone on to have incredible careers. And they all say that magic helped them with their communication skills, just giving them that little confidence that they could do something that other people in the room couldn't do. Even if they didn't perform the trick yeah. that having that in the back of your head, like, I know something that somebody else in this room has no idea how to do. Yeah. You just feel like, okay, well, I'm, I might not be the best at sports. I might not be the best at this or that. But having one thing that you know that you can do that other people can't, sometimes that's just the edge that a kid needs to walk into a room with their head held high. Right, and not only with their head held high, but be able to meet people. You had said it you it helped yeah. you in life be uh, as an icebreaker. And I think it's hard to make friends as, as children. It's hard to make friends as adults. So to have that kind of in your back pocket to just be like, hey, let me show you this. And yeah. that's such a great tool to have. Yeah, it's uh, one of the things that it's it's been really good for me is I learned how to use that as, I hate to say it, as a crutch to meet people. And now... I don't tell people I'm a magician. They look at my face and they go, what do you do? Yeah. <laughs> Barbershop quartet? Oh, magician. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I got it, got it. Got it. Um, but I don't, I don't need the magic anymore. I can have a conversation with people and I've learned the skills from being a magician all those years. Mm -hmm. So being able to give that to a child in the beginning, I have one student specifically who her parents are like, she was super shy, really introverted, and she's come out of her shell. She's performing her own online Zoom magic shows with her best friend. And the two of them are so just... Cool blossoming into young magicians and it's like man i i think i had a hand in that <laughs> yeah you did wow john man i'll tell you what this is it's so it's so amazing what you do magic wise like let's just put that aside but like what you're doing for people and and especially like kayla said in, in this time uh just it's amazing man we need we need more people like you uh doing these fantastic things and, and spreading the positivity of magic because uh, I did, when I went to the Magic Castle the one time, right, there was there was maybe like 10 people around this bar. So it was a small show. And this guy did this trick, and I was just like, whoa! <laughs> and he was like, you're the reason I do magic. Yeah. And he pointed to me, and I was like, yes. See, yeah. this is – and uh, like you said, my, my boyish wonder, I think had I maybe like five or six years old, and my mom was like, do you want to be a magician or something like that or take a magic class, I would have definitely done that. But because I haven't done it, I refuse to now because I want – I want the boyish wonder to always be with me until I'm 80 years old, you know? My, my, I have a firm belief that everybody should know how to do one good magic trick, okay. tell one clean joke, <laughs> and have a really good bar bet. Those are three things that if every human had one, just one of each, they'd always have an opener for a conversation. They'd have mm -hmm. an icebreaker because there's the point where you get to a party and somebody's not really feeling they want to be the first person to talk. Sure. But if you can have a good clean joke and you can you know you lie every time be like i just heard this funny joke you could have told it a hundred times your delivery will be better then <laughs> uh, having those three things in your back pocket i think that's important i think mm -hmm. you know we all sign kids up for piano lessons we sign them up for soccer we sign them up for mm -hmm. you know karate lessons do we expect them to become you know all-star players or concert pianists or you know, we don't right. but we rarely sign a kid up for a magic class just for it just because yeah. and i think that magic should be lined up right alongside with all those other activities, all those extracurriculars, put your kid in for one season, just, you know, 10 or 15 classes, just to see if they like it. And if they don't like it, I guarantee you, they're gonna get something out of it just as much as the discipline focus they get from piano lessons or football. And the one thing that they don't get, I mean, they'll get all those things from, you know, they'll get the focus discipline and, and those team building skills from doing those sports. But the thing they lose is the communication. When you're focused on playing piano, your your eyes are down here. Yeah. Totally. When you're focused on football, your eyes are on the field. When you're focused on magic, your eyes are here. You're looking, you're hearing, you're listening. And and that's important. And that's a skill that I think is 
sadly, as you know, little kids become screenagers, is getting lost. It really <laughs> is. They st they stop having a communication like this, and they start having a communication like this, where they're kind of halfway between one conversation and another activity. Yeah, right. I mean, I think that we should put our daughters into magic classes. Let's do it. But, Let's do it. Man, this is John. You're opening up a whole new world here, uh, and everybody in chat is loving you. So, th and I, we are loving this as well. Now. Thank you. Uh, trickybizny.com is where they tricky can trickybiz.com I uh, trickybizny is our Instagram. Oh got it. Okay. trickybiz.com. trickybiz.com. Um, and mustache on the move you can find on YouTube. Yep, and mustache on the move.com is my overarching home page on okay. the interwebs. Boom. So if you go there you can get to everything else I do. Fantastic. Cool. Okay. Uh so it, I I'll, I'll throw the links all in the description. I put all your you know the follows and stuff in the description as well, but I want people to if you have young kids and you're watching and you want to do it or you just want to learn magic in general, uh you did say you said a joke, a magic trick and a bar bet. What is your bar bet? So, um it's it's the oldest thing in the book, I think. It's where you have the three shot glasses and they have to get them all mouth up in three moves. Okay. Are you familiar with this one? I am no. not. No. Uh, and you know what? I didn't set up for that. <laughs> I grab my cups. It's funny. We're I putting thought John I, on the spot here. I know. I originally thought he said bar back and yeah. need to have a good bar back. And in my mind, I'm oh, like, no, no, you just have like back. a bar back a bar following back. you around. Okay. I don't know what that is. I'm so happy you specified. I have a good bar bet joke, and but it is not clean. That's why you asked him. Yes. Uh, no, oh, because it's like that. Are you saying you, you have two for one? Yes. Then it's the joke yeah. and the bar bet. Correct. Yeah. But yours is dirty, so dirty does that count? No, it doesn't really work. Here okay, oh, here cool. we go. Okay. All right, so um, yeah, I have these uh, these these cups, right? Okay. And you can do this with shot glasses. You can do this with cups. You can do this with, um, with with mugs. Any any item, any vessel, drinking vessel. You can do this with uh, with at a bar, at a restaurant, at a at a diner, at a barbecue. Okay. And the idea is you have three cups, and you have to do it in three moves. You have to turn over the cups in three moves. Uh, so that all the cups are mouth up. So that's one, that's two, and that's three. And it seems easy enough, right? Three moves. And then you let the other person do it. You say, here, go ahead, your turn. And they'll do it. And no matter how many times they try to turn those cups, every time they do it, it's not going to work. They're going to end up with it being kind of off. And the secret is actually really simple. Uh, you, have to, uh, uh, you have to start with the end in mind. Um, when you set it up for yourself, it's pretty simple. You make sure that the outside mugs are actually upside down and the middle one is right side up. When you turn the cups, you do the middle and one side, you do the two ends, and then you just do the two go mouth up. And they go, yeah, it seems easy enough. Now, when you have them do it, you turn over the middle cup. Right. And I don't know if you remember uh, in man. the beginning when I set it up, my two ends mm -hmm. were face down mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the middle mm -hmm. was right side up. Caleb so it's a simple, it. it's a simple, <laughs> simple um, bar bet. And the best part is if somebody goes, I know how that's done, just be like, all right, let's see who we can get. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. what you've got is you've got this camaraderie. You've got this rapport built immediately with the person that you were trying to, quote, stump. But the best part is at the end, you give them that secret. And it's not a magic trick, but it is like a, it is like a, let me bring you into the inner circle. It feels like a little bit of a magic trick, though. Yeah. I love yeah. it. I love wow. That. All right, so John, I did ask uh, selfishly if you could do a couple tricks for us. Oh uh, yeah, sure. You want to see my big opener? Yes, let's do it. Here you go. Here you go. So it's the uh, <laughs> biggest one I could find. Uh, yes, John, crushing. <laughs> see, I'm your ultimate audience, man. Oh, it's this is so the best. Good. <laughs> so the um, the you, you did say you wanted to see a trick, and I, yes. Just kidding. This is a, this is a joke for fun. Uh, so my question to you is: uh, Do you want me to read your mind? Or do you want me to do a card trick? Josh is so happy. Is she? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? I think read your mind. Read my mind. Yeah, I was, I was leaning. Read your mind. That. All right. So this is actually a trick that I teach the kids. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to my desktop so you can see it. Uh, we're all stuck in a pandemic right now. Mm -hmm. So we we haven't been able to go anywhere. I've been home alone, eleven months, uh, twelve months, thirteen months now. I'm losing track of time. Um, but I'm thinking about where I want to go on vacation. Okay. And uh, you started talking about uh, going all these different amusement parks, roller coasters and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I called my magic travel agent. My magic travel agent said, yeah, you know, where do you want to go? I said, uh, I don't know, someplace interesting, someplace I've never been before. So they gave me this. 
this is a magic travel token, and we're going to use that to select where we go. Let me uh, turn to my uh, tabletop here. Okay. So uh, first place we can go is the moon. Oh. We can have uh, a lemonade with an alien named Kevin, or we can uh, uh, go swimming in a crater. Okay. We could go to a uh, tr jungle treehouse. Oh. We could have a pizza delivered by a bird, or maybe play hide and seek with a monkey. Okay. Or we could go to this place. This is the uh, Coral Castle. Coral oh. Castle, we could uh, have a conversation. Uh, we could go play hide and seek with a dolphin or uh, maybe uh, go fish with a crab. Okay. Now, uh, this travel token, only good for one trip. Where do you want to go? Do you want to go to the Coral Castle, the moon, or the jungle treehouse? I mean, I know where you would want to go. He said the word pizza. Yeah, I think I got to go to Coral, the, the treehouse. The treehouse. So I'm going to put the travel token there. So we don't, Space don't forget. Me. Now, I have a question. Josh, yes. do you want to change your mind? No, I want to see that. Okay, that later on, when you wake up pizza. from a dead sleep, and you will, you're going to say, but what if I changed my mind? You want to stick with it? I want to stick with it. I want to stick with All it. All right, check it out. Okay. On the back of the postcard, it says, I knew you would pick the jungle treehouse. Enjoy the stay and the pizza. Ta-da! Wait, what are the ba what's what? the back of the others say? Yeah. Sometimes you say words, and they hurt me on the inside. You don't trust me, do you? Okay. Check it out. Okay. On the back of the moon, it says... You could have had an out of this world experience, but no, you wanted it in the treehouse. And on the back of the coral castle, it says, oops, can't change your mind now. You wanted to stay high and dry in the jungle treehouse. Is it the pizza thing? You know? <laughs> no, actually, I, I had no idea you were going to pick whatever. And, and this is the best part. That is actually one of the tricks I teach the kid in my yeah. purple wand course. I okay. uh, We set the courses up so they are um, like karate. Oops. Oh, like uh, yeah, belts, actually, like very similar to martial belts. arts. Okay. Oh, so wow. you start at your purple wand, and you work your way up till you get to your black wand. Oh, and this man. way, each so cool. wand builds on different skills and builds on different techniques, and they learn different things as they go through it. So this way, everybody starts at the beginning. Yeah. Even if they've taken 10 or 12 magic classes, even if they've watched cool. everything on YouTube, there's other things in the courses that I want them to get the hang of. There's games that we play that teach them skills about taking we, – we play I call it the Zoom game. I have a picture that I zoom in all the way on. Yeah. And uh, and then we zoom out and they've got to guess what it is. Mm -hmm. And as they're doing that, I'm reinforcing that sometimes it's important to take a step back. Look at your surroundings. Look at what everybody's watching because you don't want somebody to be too close and see behind you. Mm -hmm. So you need to take a step back and take in your surroundings. And that little lesson, which is built into a game, has nothing to do with a magic secret, but it is a presentation secret. Mm. I mean – I'm you know, sometimes it gets a little weird. deep and I it's deep. Like, I, John, you are incredible. <laughs> I mean, it's this so is the best. So happy to have met you. I should have just truly. done a magic show and just interviewed magicians uh, for you, three years. You want to see something? Yeah, yes. Of course. Here you go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm sorry, something wrong? <laughs> uh, I think I broke something. <gasps> oh my god. Uh, can I can I give a shameless plug? Yeah, of course. Uh, my granny always said, do something with your life. I told her she should have been more specific. Okay. <laughs> um, I created something, okay. literally. It's a silicone bake form in the shape of the word something. And the guy who did the Discover Magic program was actually my partner on this this uh, endeavor. Okay. This is a cookbook that has 365 ideas of what you can do with the mold. Oh. So you can make soap. So you have something to help uh, get rid of the germs. It's bakeable up to 450 degrees, dishwasher safe and durable. You could run it over with a truck. I don't know why you would do that, but they yeah. do that on all the infomercials. Uh -huh. But um, I wanted to be able to bring something for dessert. So this was this was an idea that came from that funny little sponge bit that I used to do in my kid's birthday party show. I go, you kids want to see something? And I gave it to somebody as a housewarming gift. And they thought it was great. I was like, oh, man, I got to buy these things by the dozen. Yeah. And I thought there's a way to make this an exponential smile. If I give somebody that phone thing, it ends there. It ends with me giving it to them. But if I can give them something that they can then turn into something else and then share something and take pictures, the smiles grow. And my, my mission in life has been to create 10 million smiles. Uh, and I, it's good because that's a high enough number that I can't just do it real easily. Yeah. But it's also a high enough number that I keep losing counts. So I have to start over again. <laughs> uh, and and this was this was one of those tools. I mean, everything I do is a tool to make people smile. Uh, I feel wow. like that's something that uh, that is missing in the world. You've done it with these two, right? I know. Here. I was going to say. Stop my cheeks. Are hurting. <laughs> John, it's awesome. Add yeah. two more baking, to, on your way to bakingsomething.com. Say it again. Bakingsomething.com. Bakingsomething.com. I love that. Um, I mean, yeah, like Kayla said, you put two smiles. And I, every time I pitch this show to somebody, like, what's the show like? I was like, I'm just trying to put a smile on your face for an hour every day. Mm -hmm. So, listen, yeah. we're in the smile business, John. 
Love I try. It. I try. I, I hate when people are too serious. I, me too. Me too. <laughs> John. Can you believe I spent 30 minutes on Amazon shopping for this? Yeah. Why don't did it laugh. take you 30 you know, minutes? You know you spent a half Wait. hour picking your nose too. Uh, 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 bu- bu- John, God, you're good. Man, I want to have you back. I know you're a very, very, very busy guy. Um, would love to have you back. And you know, when if you're ever out in LA or we're in New York, um, would Please. love to would love to meet you, man. Um, Please. So fun. So just I don't know. This is this is just been amazing. I, this has been a great like, morning. Thank you so much for yeah. having me on. I really had a blast. I can't thank you enough. Uh, and John has told me about you, and he's like, "You guys are peas in a pod." And I was like, <laughs> yeah. "We'll see about that." And I started watching, and I was like, "Well, now I'm hooked." Yeah. I, I think you guys are best friends. I do. <laughs> After this whole pandemic thing, you have to meet. Absolutely, long lost brothers from another mother. John Reed, thank you so much, man. We'll have you back again. I will see you soon. Have a great All day, right. John. Bye, Reed. John. Oh uh, mustache God. on the move.com trickybiz.com uh, tricky biz ny is the instagram uh bake something.com i mean i feel like he has so many tricks up his I sleeve know. i mean that was just he's he's such a pro it's so and good. i also love what he does i, I think he's really figured out how to not only enjoy it himself but to spread the love mm-hmm. and spread the yeah. the enjoyment pay enjoyment. it forward uh what do you got Ikaika Shiva? you can see the the tricks keep rolling out i know like optimus prime <laughs> Your Optimus Prime joke was way better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Ikaika Shively does come with some hot puns, and he comes with some good jokes. What did you? What, what was your one last night that I loved, or was it yesterday's during the show? I forget. I don't know. Yeah, oh, man, we, there's so many on here, Kayla. That's what this this show is really was just pun based. I kind of started the show so I could really get more of my puns out there. But, you know. Do you guys have my? Is that my Twitter up? Yes. Okay. Okay. I was like, I haven't been on Twitter oh, no. in like years. No, but that's okay. Okay. Maybe I'll just randomly start Twitter up again. And I have your Instagram in here too. It's oh, just yeah. no, on, cool. in the description no, at that's Kayla great. Yeah. Uh on on Instagram. <laughs> um so we we did a ton of dad jokes with John Reed, but uh, Kayla, do you wanna you wanna hear another one? Heck yeah. Josh, I'm your friend. I know I'm gonna have a million dad <laughs> jokes every time we're together. And I so, love it. Uh you wanna see the graphic? Sure. All right. Is that actually Rosie or is that a doll? No, that's Rosie. That's Rosie. I know, and she's very. That's the only time that she's ever been in the the carrier with me. She does not like it. Not with you. She, she likes it with Amanda. She'll sleep in there for three You're hours. You're too with hairy and hot. Like you know, they get too sweaty. Not hot in look, hot in temperature. Well, I meant both. Well, because somebody called me Paul Giamatti in the comments. And, and by I'm, the way, why? <laughs> why do we need to do that? I I was telling Josh. I was asking him before we started this. Who would you want to be compared to? And then I said wait who's Rosie Huntington Whitley married to or Whiteley and you were like Jason Statham Jason and Statham. that's who he would like so mm-hmm. for those of you can you guys share in the comments how much he looks like Jason Statham oh Kayla thank you Let's so much do it. Let's I'll do also it. take chubby Tucci whatever you guys want to call like him I'm a big Stanley Tucci guy <laughs> uh okay um <clears throat> Kayla yes how do you make seven even I, I don't know you, you take away the s very good. That was very John Reed yes. esque of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Ikai Kashavi, what do you got? I, I found one yesterday. Oh. He ran like. Yes, hit it. What did the DJ name his son? Turntables. Eric? <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Come on! The Prince of the Islands. Good. The Great Hunkino. The you Sultan guys, of Swarth. Do you guys ever. Ha- oh, nice. Yeah. Nice reference. Maybe just I love it. I, I've just given him as many nicknames as I can. <laughs> <laughs> the Great Hunkino, the Hawaiian Hunk. Uh, wait, what's uh, Prince of the Islands, Aloha Friday. Because uh, he, he's Hawaiian by birth. And we just say he was born and raised in Hawaii. He was born and raised in San Jose, but he went to school in Hawaii. Is your family Hawaiian at all? Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Ikaika means strength in numbers in Hawaiian. Oh, wow. It's close enough. What was it? What is it actually? Power, strength, determination. It's pretty close. Kind of Power close. strength determination. Like kind of close. No, nothing about numbers word. in no. there at <laughs> I was like, all. Where'd you get <laughs> <laughs> and that's what this channel is: strength in numbers, Kayla. That's right. Boom. Do you guys ever have people write in and or comment dad jokes? Uh, Not really. Sometimes. I think I you mean, guys have told them all. By all means, please enter more dad jokes in here because I was curious. doing questions of the day. People weren't really jumping on board with those, so Got you it. know, it's all, it's all a uh, you know one long just evolving of whatever. I Kayla. love it. Do you know I what I'm saying? It's great. Uh, in the chat, thank you for this. Uh, John, uh, Jeff Weisberg says, "Wait, you aren't Jason Statham?" <laughs> there you go. Oh, See, oh, no. thank you. Love no. it. We better Jason Statham. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, okay, let's do some uh, videos that make me smile. You're and usually good at impressions. It's not good. But that was really it's not, good. Uh, my Jason Statham's not that good. Uh, I just kind of sound like an angry pirate, don't yeah. I? Yeah. <laughs> Love it. And by the way, I'm not good at impressions. I'm like, <gasps> okay. Yeah. All right. So watch this. Because this happened on the golf course the other day, too. <gasps> this guy's stopping traffic. For ducks. For ducks. Come on. This guy's doing the oh Lord's work Oh, my God. Here. He's actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that that's. Because those ducks got to get across that road. I know. And it's a two-lane highway. I it's know. Not, that's not a one little street. Look, <gasps> baby ducks are so cute. Oh, my so, God. One time, uh, Tanner, Kayla's husband, and I were playing golf, and we were playing golf with this guy who was like the ultimate bro. Like he just had that broness to him. And we're we're driving by the pond in the golf cart, and he stops the cart, and excuse my language, he just looks at the pond. And he's like, "Do you guys see how fucking cute those ducks are?" Stop. And I was like, "Yeah, man, they're super cute." He's like, "I, I mean, look at them. They're cute ducks." And I was like, I, "Yeah." Got it. And it's today. We say it all the time. Uh, all right, let's go to the next That's one. That's a lot of ducks, too. Yeah. What? Oh, wait, you got to play the sound on this one. Sorry. <laughs> and he just looks at you. And I'm going to take this. I'm taking this with me. Oh Where are they? In an office? <laughs> I like think so. Like he has a little trouble with it. <laughs> you see that one? <laughs> oh, you're so cute. Oh my goodness. He's proud of himself. He walks away with his head uh, held yeah, high. Like, like, I did it. I figured it out. Look at me. Now, w at what age do you think that uh, Poppy is going to start asking for a puppy and, and are you going to get a puppy? We definitely want to get a dog at some point. Okay. We were thinking maybe Santa would help us out with that and bring it Whoa. at some point. I okay. don't know. But, uh, you know, dogs are a lot of work. I know there's a lot of people who are only solely dog owners and I, they're like, I think it's like having a kid and I can imagine it yeah. would be. Puppies are tough. They're a lot. Puppies are tough. Yeah. All right, let's do the next one. Ikaka, did you get that email I sent you too? Yes. Okay. How did he get uh, away with this? Did you see that? The guy... <laughs> <laughs> that's Wait. in a hot game. Watch it. Oh, he grabs his ice cream. Yeah, he takes. Stop a it! Bite, and it, the guy still thinks it's in his hand. <laughs> I don't know if that was planned, Wait. but that guy is not that good of an actor to, because he legit looks confused. <laughs> Look at the guy. He walks away. Uh, this video. Uh, I I think it. <laughs> I think it's real. That's disgusting. Right. I mean, this has got to be before pandemic. Thanks right. TikTok for for bringing this up. But man, that is good. Also. <laughs> he tried and then to he, put it back in, but he didn't get it. He's wearing a Team Canada jersey too. I know. It's Tanner great. would be proud. Yeah. My husband Tanner is Canadian. Yeah. This is where the cone rona. Oh, the started. cone rona. What's yeah. the cone rona? What is like that? coronavirus, but cone rona. Oh, <laughs> ice oh. cream cone. I, I, yeah, got it. <laughs> Sorry, I was slow this morning. No, it's it, it, welcome to the Punderdom, <laughs> Kayla. It gets I, weird. I, it gets weird. Keep up, Kay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got. We, how many more do we have? One more, and then the video. You okay. Said. Yeah. You gotta play no. the sound on this. Stop it. Okay, wait. The, the, the caption is, wait, is it me or this cat just knocking the door? I right, watch this. Like, <laughs> like the perfect amount of knocks. I think that's a human in a cat. That, I wonder if that's, is that, do we know? Is that where this cat lives and this is how the, the cat gets <laughs> in? Wow, that's a clever cat. I mean, Listen. She's waiting too. She like puts her head down, like, okay, someone coming. Cats scare me a little because they're, they're up to something, right? Wow. But this cat is like a genius. I yeah. Cats have figured things out that we just don't really know about. Yeah, it's crazy. What do you think your cat, like, cats do when people leave? I don't know. I mean, it's it's like that secret life of pets, basically. Yeah, totally. Yeah. All right, let's go to the last one. So yesterday was my niece's first birthday, Aww. Olivia. And Happy birthday, Olivia. We're, we're going over to their house on Sunday for a little little birthday party. And my sister-in-law, Leah, posted this on her Instagram. I was like, you have to send me the video of this because it is one of the cutest videos you'll ever see. So, look, they, they got French bulldog puppies to come over, four of them. And look at little Olivia waving at them. Wait, she just waves at them? <gasps> and then look at, look at the little one waving back at her. Like, oh. hey, I want to be your friend. I want to be your friend. Is this a service? People will come and bring baby dogs? Yes, you can get <gasps> puppies brought to your house. Just wow. play it again. Look, I mean, look. At, and then she waves because that's all she can do right, right now. She does like wave and also, she does like the hand close. Look at that birthday hat headband. I know, I know. <laughs> it's the size of her head. I know. <gasps> wow. And there's just all these little puppies in there. And um, we, I mean, I love French Bulldogs oh so gosh. much. Oh. 
that's a really cute idea for a Isn't party it? or anything. Yeah. yeah, Josh, we'll do it for your next birthday. You <laughs> uh, and Olivia. Duh. Can we get well, puppies and a magician? I'm literally yes, 11. Yes, and we will also make sure you have that giant birthday hat yeah. and headband. Quick story. So, <laughs> well, I think it would look pretty good. I have the same amount of hair as my niece, I think. Um, the uh, One time, your husband and I were playing golf. This is another golf story, okay? And we went to have a beer after the round, and we were at this club. It was at Angeles National. It's a golf course up here. And there was a birthday party going on. Okay. Okay. And it was for like a 90 year old woman's birthday party. And th- the, the tables were all taken, but the bar was still open. So Tan's like, all right, let's, we'll just have a beer and then we'll go. All of a sudden, a magician comes in. <laughs> and he's like, all right, we're going to have a magician now. And I was like, we're staying. <laughs> okay. And we sat at the bar and watched this magician. And we were the loudest clappers. I was like, did you? It was amazing. I had no idea yeah. you have this long lost love with magic. Of magic. Wow. Yeah. Of magic. Uh, any kind of magic yeah. at all. Uh, we wow. went. We went the one time to the magic castle. I brought my dad, and he was like, "You are really excited." Will you take us when yes, the pandemic's uh, 100%. over? I've never been, you're and on, I've always wanted to go. Yes. For those who don't live in LA, the magic castle is basically what you would think of it—an entire castle yeah. full of magic, different rooms, full. different everything. You can sit and eat, right? Yeah. There's dinner. Oh, it's I'm, it's basically like so a, a magic country club. You have right. to be a member. It's right on front. It's like right in downtown Hollywood, which right. is the crazy part. At one point, Neil Patrick Harris was like the mi- master, like the minister of magic at the Magic Castle. Wow. You know he's a magician too. I mean, that doesn't surprise no. me once you say it. Yeah, but totally. I didn't know that. No. He learned magic on the set of Doogie Howser. Like you know, in between takes, he was just doing tricks. <laughs> it's it's a crazy story. Neil Patrick Harris is. I mean, <laughs> if he if he got the job hosting Jeopardy, I'd be like, okay. He's, is he the only one that you would be okay with? Well, LeVar Burton, because they're yeah. going to, if they give it to LeVar Burton, I'm totally fine with it. I will be LeVar Burton's understudy forever. Uh, he's influenced so many people's lives, and I watched R- Reading Ra- Rainbow religiously. Uh, but also, the last couple weeks, Anderson Cooper has been lights out good at this job. Like, You'd he, be okay with him doing it. Totally. He, wow. ac- he actually seems like he and Katie Couric were fantastic. Katie Couric, I mean, she's a dream guest she's to have so on the show. She's so good at everything. I know. She's a dream guest to have on the show. It's Stanley Tucci, Katie Couric, Jason Sudeikis, because I want anybody involved with Ted Lasso on the program. It's because it's the best. Actually, we'll talk after. Okay. Um, Kayla's got those connects. Uh, Kayla. Sometimes. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. (laughs) On Roswell. Yes. Roswell, Uh, New Mexico, which is the remake of Roswell. Yes. On the CW. Mm -hmm. Super talented actress. Also, your podcast, Directionally Challenged. Yes. So my co-star from The Vampire Diaries and I have a podcast called Directionally Challenged. And it's really fun because... You know, we thought we'd have our lives figured out by the time we were in our 30s, but we don't, mm-hmm. and that's okay. And so we have experts on. We have Josh McCuga who came on, on um, when he was hosting an awesome show that you were so good in, Thank by the way. Um, okay. And so it's just lots of fun. We have experts come on and try and help us through life and people that kind of seem like they have their lives together. And what's really nice about the whole premise is – we don't have to know anything. We don't have to be good. In in a world where everyone's trying to be perfect, we can just allow ourselves to screw up, and it's okay. And I love that. Agreed. I think I do that every single day, so <laughs> makes sense. Uh, we have one more dad joke. This came from uh, Corpipa Ooh, in the chat. I love it. What do you call a fish wearing a bow tie? Fish wearing a bow tie. I don't, I don't know. Sophisticated. <gasps> Ooh. Pun in a dad joke. I love it. See, I love these people b- writing in, in. You guys keep writing in those dad yep, jokes. I love best. it. Uh, you guys have been amazing. Thank you all so much, Kayla. Thanks for making this the trip. so fun. You're the best. Thanks for having me. Anytime. Uh, we're going to get Kayla and her husband Tanner on an episode of Josh Pretty very soon. Deal. The battle for House Novelin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're here every single weekday, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, tonight, Ken will be back with Internet for Old People. Tomorrow on the show, Chloe Connor will be back with the Positivity Report. Ooh. Uh, and Mark Ellis, always here on a Friday. We'll probably do some weather. Listen, if you want me to feature your town on weather, I do the weather, Kayla, from there. And we green screen it, and I'm a weatherman. That's amazing. <laughs> and you do any, like, someone's small town weather. Yeah, any town. Whatever you want, go to streamlabs.com slash goodpeoplegpa, wherever. Five dollars and over, I will do your town on the weather tomorrow. We'll do as many as we can or until Ikaika's head explodes. Because last week he was searching the world map for <gasps> towns, which oh was hilarious. Uh, John Mariano says, have Kayla on regularly. As often oh, as she thanks. wants to come on, Kayla is welcome to thanks, be on here. John. We're all very busy people, uh, but 
again, Kayla. Always I, I'll here. definitely be back. Yeah, don't course, you worry. Of course. Uh, and uh, tomorrow uh, evening on Josh, or sorry, Friday evening on Josh Purdy, 4 p.m. Pacific. T. Bob A. Bear, who Ooh, you know, hey. versus Dylan Sanders, the battle for LSU, the Bengal Tigers. Coming in hot, 4 p.m. Pacific. So thank you all for be being so here. Good. As always, check out all the other content, the Good People Association. Go to the gpa.fund to join the Bucket Club. We love you all so much. Remember, every single day you choose positivity. It's mm -hmm. an active choice. You wake up, you say, today I'm going to be positive. Yes. It's way easier to love than hate. Find the good. We'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.